Yo, yo, what's good, YouTube? Back up on the channel. You already know Big Sam TV. Holla at me. Coming up here with the true stories. You heard true stories, no gimmicks. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start it off like I always start it off. You already know. Shout out to all my dudes on YouTube telling their stories, their hood stories, their life stories, whatever, man. Shout out to all of them. You know what I'm saying? Word. Just keep telling your stories and... You know, letting people know what it is. You heard? Word. Anyway, you know, like I said, subscribe to the channel, Big Sam TV. Leave your comment. Do whatever. Today, we're going to bring you some crazy stories because you already know what it is. And we're going to talk about the Chinese, you know? Leave the Chinese alone, bro. Word. And I say that because, you know, I'm from the old school, man. And, you know, like I said, I'm a Lower East Sider. Shout outs to the Lower East Side. You know? And... You know, growing up in the 90s, I see a lot of bad stuff happen to the Chinese. You know what I mean? It was crazy. The Chinese was like, you know, the number one victims in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Word. Especially around, you know, Chinatown and the LES, they was like number one. I don't know about other boroughs, but, you know, where I was at, they was like most likely the ones getting robbed and all the time and all that. You know, and being from where I was from, you know, I had my fair share of beef with Chinese dudes, you know what I'm saying, word. So, you know, I'm here to tell y'all, leave the Chinese alone, man, word, because those people, they don't, you know, they don't mess with nobody, they don't bother nobody, they stick to their kind, and it is what it is. You know, but anyway, you know, my stories is that, you know, back in the 90s, like I was saying, you know, the Chinese was, was, was you know, the victim of choice unfortunately you know and like i said in my first video you know i got into some gold shadow beef back in the days like in 1994 over some you know somebody getting robbed who they thought it was us but it wasn't us but it ended up being you know some beef that could have went left real quick you know but anyway yeah you know like i was saying back in the days you know the chinese were 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 the choice for easy for easy robbery, you know? And I ain't gonna lie, I've done it before, you know, needing money, I've done it before. You know, I was never big on it though. I've always been a hustler, working type nigga. You know what I'm saying? I never really been big on a robbery and hurting people, getting people's blood on me and stuff. I'm not with all that. You know what I'm saying? Word. But I've done my fair share you know, of, of dirt to survive out there in the 90s, you know what I mean? Days are a lot easier nowadays. Kids think that everything, you know, grows on trees and you just get on the internet and make mad money. You know, times was hard when there was no internet and none of that. You had to actually go work a BS minimum wage job. If not, you was hustling in the street, trying not to get killed by some other jealous dude, you know what I'm saying? Work. Or you was committing robberies, you know? And I know plenty of dudes that's in jail for robbing Chinese people, B. So stop it. If I mean, I doubt that it's going on nowadays the way it used to. But if you are, leave it alone, bro. Especially now that it's like super worse now. You get a hate crime and all that. Just leave it alone. It's not like back in the days where if you really just did want to rob this Chinese person, you know what I mean, that you just get the robbery charge. Now they're going to throw the hate crime on you, all of that. You know what I'm saying? word and well you know back in them days yo it's like every other day you see a chinese nigga getting robbed or a chinese delivery man getting his food snatched or somebody calling for a delivery just to set him up and, and take his bread you know it was common where i was from you know but word i want to tell you about a time that you know, I saw these kids robbing this Chinese lady, you heard. And it was broad daylight out there, man. Broad daylight. It was over there by some park that we know. You know what I mean? And these kids was like six deep, bro. Six deep. Pulling and robbing and kicking this lady and everything. But I ain't gonna lie. The lady will not let go of the purse. You see what I'm saying? And I'm assuming that, you know, that's what they was trying to get to was a purse. And all that. And when the kid tried to run by and... I guess he tried to snag it. And when he realized, you know, she was really holding on, I ain't gonna lie. That lady was holding on to that purse for her life. 
So yeah, I remember the kids kicking up. One of them had like those roller blade skates from back in the days and all that, you know. So he was kicking up, kicking up, kicking up while the other dude was pulling, pulling, pulling. Yo, and they was dragging up for at least, at least, for, for a minute, I want to say at least almost half a block, word, almost a half a short block, they dragged that lady. And, you know, after, you know, the kids ran, you know, they ran and they ran past us and all that. And what's more funny that, you know, we smoking in the park. Me and my man, we smoking at L, whatever. And we smoking in the park. So we watching all this go down, broad daylight. It's probably like 4.30 in the afternoon in the summer day. Word. And there was plenty of people out there. But yeah, but we watching this go down, smoking. And we like, yo, this is crazy, right? And... It wasn't crazy to us because, like I said, that was the, the, the norm where, I'm, where I was from at that time in the 90s and all that. That was the norm. So, yeah, after we finished smoking, we ended up walking a couple blocks, you know, and ended up walking into a pizza shop where we see these kids, you know, and these kids are like, they talk, they, they, they're not like talking about it, but you can tell like they make a movement like, yo... You think we hot? Yo, you think this? One is saying, yo, nah, we should go back, like, in that area or whatever the hell. I remember that. So my man was like, yo, what you got? What y'all, what y'all, you know, what y'all dudes got from her? And they like, yo, we didn't get nothing. He's like, y'all didn't get nothing? The kid is like, nah, we, we, we ain't get nothing. She only had like a, a couple of food stamps. That's when back when there was no EBT card. You know what I'm saying? People had food stamps, books, the brown tens, the 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 turquoise twenty dollar bills. With you know, you never seen a food stamp? Look it up, bro. Google it. Find out what it is. Before the EBT and all that. You know what I'm saying? Word. Niggas nowadays. You know, they don't be shy about it. Not like me. When I was a little kid, mommy used to send me to the store with them joint show. Embarrassing. You know what I mean? But now, people swipe that EBT card, no problem. You know what I'm saying? They swipe that joint like they got a bank account with the EBT. You see what I mean? But word, back in the days, you had to actually have the, 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 the booklet, bro. Real niggas know, bro. Real niggas know they went to the store with the food stands for their mother. And, 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 and they was embarrassed. And tight because their friends might see them and then in school be like, yeah, yeah, your mother's on welfare and all that crap. When their mother was on welfare too. You remember them days. I'm pretty sure I wasn't the only one that had friends like that. But anyway, back to the Chinese, right? So my man's like, yo, what y'all got, you know, from the lady? They like, nah, we only got like, like $70 in food stamps. So my man is like, yo, all that kicking and all that stuff y'all did to that lady and all y'all got was $70 in food stamps. So I was, you know, at this time, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a little nigga, but I'm not a grown nigga neither. I'm probably like 15. You know, I'm a teen. You know, I'm a teen just getting in, 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 into the into the streets and stuff, you know. So boom, the kids leave. The kids leave, right? So after the kids leave, my man who who's done this before also was like, you see, bro, that's why me, when I gotta do something like that, you know what I'm saying? You don't see me hurting them or kicking them or doing none of that, man. I keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? I try my best, you know, to keep it as quiet as can be. You see what them kids was doing and they only got $70. You see what I'm saying? And that poor lady, they, the way they was kicking her and all that for, for fucking bullshit, $70 in food stamps. You see what I'm saying? Only because they could. Because like I said, the Chinese were looked at as, as hardcore victims for robbery back in the 90s. I don't know about now, but back then, you know, they was real leery. They catch you following you. They wouldn't even go up the block. I had a Chinese nigga who lived in my building with me for like 14 years. He never got in the elevator with me. 
that I had to tell him, like, yo, bro, you know me. I live here with you. You see me all the time. He never will get in the elevator with me. I respect it. But, yeah. So here we go as I'm getting older, remembering what my man told me. I got into it, you know? A little nigga broke. At that time, everybody was doing it. It looked like something fun to do. Because when you're a little nigga, you think hurting people is fun, you know? But it's not. So, yeah, I started getting into the, the whole catching a pay thing. That's what it was called. Let's go catch a pay. Or, or Vic, right? Let's go catch a Vic or pay. Right? So I got into it and I catch myself out there. You know, the first time I did it, I felt like the little nigga, you know, like they was just using me like, yo, you know, we're going to follow him. And when he goes in the building, you know, we're going to grab him. And again, I could talk about this because I've done it. I, I've served the penalty for it, all that. So, you know, I don't really care. I'm not really going to say no names on no other dudes because I try not to even say no names on this channel. You heard? Word. But if I did want to say a name, you know, keep it real discreet, you know, word. But yeah, I got into it. And the first time that I did it, you know, my mans, they was like, yo, we're going to hold him. We're going to hold him and you're going to dig his pockets. Right? So was, I, I was like, all right, whatever. At this, at this time, I was so broke. I was ready to do anything to get paid, you know what I'm saying? Besides suck a dick, you know what I mean? Because that'll never happen. But, you know, just relentless to get paid, you know? So, we caught him. We caught the dude. It was pretty easy. We didn't get much. We followed him. It went smooth. You know what I'm saying? They grabbed him up, whatever. They yoked him up. That's what they used to do. They yoked him up while the little guy like me came and, and dug his pockets, you know? You know, some dudes used to get extra and rip their pockets and do all this extra crap and whatever, man. So we caught him. Probably had like a hundred bucks on him, maybe a hundred forty dollars on him. That time, you know, we was little niggas, so at that time, a hundred and forty dollars just was crazy. You know, sixty dollars, seventy dollars in my pocket each. You know, or. or, or not even that much because it was three of us, but you know, even 40, 50 balls in your pocket at that age and you're a broke nigga, you know, you was with it. And it was, it, you know, it seemed easy. Like I said, we went in and did it. It was out. We broke, we broke out, right? So yeah, you know how something looks easy. A person's just going to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? You seen the movie set it off. They rob one bank, you know, another bank, and then, you know, they got into a situation, but unfortunately, they would have kept robbing because they thought it was easy, you know, if the movie would have kept on going. Trust me. Once you get away with something and, and you continue to get away with it, trust me. That goes with anything, with cheating, anything. But anyway, back to the Chinese. Boom. So here we go. We go out there again and again, and, you know, we do it. We're doing it now. You know, we're doing it. But I ain't going to lie. One day... Oh, hold up, hold up. Boom. One day we catch this other cab driver dude. Right? This cab driver dude. And the cab driver dude was Chinese. And, and, and at that time, you know, that was weird because, you know, cab driver dudes are all Arab, but this one was Chinese. Right? And he was trying to hit us with a, he had a flat tire. And we were trying to help him fix his flat tire. But there were so many of us that he couldn't even pay attention to, like, what was going on, you know? So, you know, a whole, you know, we had them looking under the car like, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. While other people were going in the car and taking all the stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that was the time that we got away with, with a couple of dollars. You know, China man had a couple of dollars. And, you know, we split it on amongst the crew, got fresh, did a lot of stuff. He had like two racks at him and two racks back then, you know, buy a lot of clothes and, and stuff like that, you know. Work. So, yeah, we continued on and continued on. And like I said, you know, I was always a hustler. 
working type nigga. I never been really a, a, a robbing nigga. I never even really stole a bike, nothing. I, I don't I don't really like to steal. I don't like people who steal. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna be in my crib, I let you into my crib. You know, don't be stealing nothing. All that that that's whack. Sneak thieves on the island, all that that's whack. Don't be stealing, man. Earn what you need to get and and do your thing. Yeah. So one day, you know, I'm I'm with this OG dude. They keep telling me about how he's an OG and was supposed to be doing life in jail and all this crap and and they let him go. You know, he had, he was he like sniped the dude back in the days or something and they let him go or something. He did like 25, 30 years. So to me, he looks like a regular dude. You know, he don't even look like he came from jail. It looked like he never worked out while he was doing 30 years or nothing. He just looked, he did look like a crazy ass hitman though. He used to wear these tight leather jackets and all this crap with with sunglasses looking like the fucking Terminator and shit. But yeah, when he came home, I had hooked up with him. And, you know, he was robbing the Chinese, but he was doing it differently. He wasn't just like yoking them up and digging their pockets. He was like snatching their chains and shit. Saying, and he used to tell me, like, you know, Chinese gold is the most expensive gold. So even when you see these little skinny joints, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and all that, you take it, you see what I'm saying, little medallions and Chinese gold, you take all that, so I used to not believe him, whatever, but boom, he snatched a chain, he snatched this lady's chain, and when I tell you this shit was Batele string, he, like, that's how thin it was, man, if, if anybody knows of Bateles, I know my Boricua Spanish niggas, Dominicans know what Bateles, you know, the strings you tied up with, that's how skinny that joint was, but it was Chinese gold, you know what I mean? And at that time, they had a lot of Jewish pawn shops and stuff, you know, around Chinatown that didn't really require ID. They didn't care where you got it from. They just like, yo, let me get it. And you know, if they post, they're gonna shice you on whatever price is probably worth more. So boom, he takes it in and, and you know, he gives it to the Jewish guy. And the Jewish guy is like, he calls him to the glass. So of course, you know, the, the you know, we thinking like, oh, you know, we hot, you know. But he calls him to the glass and he not he you know he he, he knock he tells him through the window, he's like, um, I give you nine hundred dollars for this. So we like, what, nine hundred dollars for that little patel string shit? Boom, gimme. So once we saw that, you know, he gave him nine hundred dollars, it was crazy. It was like bang chain city, you heard? Running through Chinatown, banging through two or three chains at a time, man. You heard? Word. I remember we caught these, these, these. I don't know what they was. I think they was like Chinese bookies or something. Caught them niggas for like four racks. They was just chilling in the building with the door open. It was like the easiest money we ever took. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I don't be trying to incriminate myself. Like I said, I already done paid the penalties for whatever I done got caught with. And anything I didn't get caught with, you know, God bless me. You know, let me, may I pay in other ways, you, you, you know? Word. Facts. And I'm going to say, stop messing with the Chinese, man. Word. But now I'm going to continue on. Yeah, so banging chains became a thing, you know? Taking them, taking the Chinese gold to that Jewish man. He was hitting us off, you know? But then, you know, we caught these dudes, like I said, some some bookie, Chinese bookies. I don't know. They had bread, though. They had bread, word. So, boom. Here we come one day, right? It's cold as hell outside. It's like me and, like, four, four of my dudes, right, at this time. We had a little crew. You know what I mean? So, it's like four little, you know, we, it's us and four little dudes. So we bored as hell. It's freezing outside. These are the nights niggas just, these are the days that niggas just stood on corners for no reason, just chilling, broke as hell, smoking whatever, blunt, Hennigan, word. So we broke as hell, freezing. So about, you know, 12 o'clock at night, one of them said, yo, fuck it, let's just go catch a pay, right? Yo, and it looked all like a good idea, right? Because, like I said, it was like a thing a thing to do in the 90s. So, you're like, yo, let's go catch a pay. Fuck it. So, everybody was like, word, fuck it. Let's go catch a pay, bro. 
So here we are. We walking around like, uh, I don't know what, what street that is, but it's somewhere by like um, Hester Park in the Lower East Side. I don't know, you know, if anybody knows Hester Park in the Lower East Side. It's like some school there, and then it's Seward Park, and then there's like a bunch of other stuff there. We walking around that neighborhood, right? Now, this is an area that I know well. You know what I'm saying? I, I know everything about this park. We used to hang out in the pool at night, you know what I'm saying, with bitches and all that come and break and climb over the fence, hanging out when has the pool. It, it was a spot, you know, in the 90s. So I knew the park well. So we walking down, we walking down. So we, we, we come around like somewhere on Eldridge Street, right? So we see a dude. We see a dude and, you know, back then... People used to think by describing them by looking at their back pocket, you know, and if their back pocket was fat, <laughs> then, you know, that would make a dude assume, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, that the, the dude had money. Word. This used to happen a lot in Masrick Towers, too, on the Lower East Side. A lot of Chinese people used to get robbed there frequently, and these was like middle class Chinese people who had bread. So they was getting robbed for real, you heard? Word. But anyway, boom, we walking around like Eldridge Street somewhere, you know? And we see the Chinese dude. Right? Well, before I tell you that, let me tell you this. Because I, I have, you know, got caught before too. Before this. You know what I mean? And there was one time that I got caught with my man who was older than me. And, and, you know, I don't want to say his name, but shouts out to him if he ever sees this video and he knows what I'm talking about. But, yeah, he was older than me, but somehow, some way, he worked his way into Spafu with me. And it was crazy how we got caught there. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy how we got caught there. Because, again, it was my man who was thirsty. And he was like, yo, look at his back pocket and all this crazy stuff and all this crazy stuff. And I'm trying to tell him, yo, he don't got no bread. Those are not pockets. Those are like pajama boxer shorts that the Chinese nigga had on, you heard? But my man, being persistent, nah, he got the fat pocket. Oh, yeah, oh, older dude. Boom. Convinced me into doing it. You know what I mean? So we follow this dude. We go into the building. And, you know, we grab him up. And, of course, he had no money. <laughs> Just like I told the dude, he had no money. You know what I'm saying? So, we come out the building. We come out the building. Boom. Chinaman comes out behind us yelling, Oh, Chinese. What's a coincidence that there was a cop car just waiting for the red light, yo? I swear to everything. It was just at the red light. He went running towards the cop car. So, boom, we took off. Cops behind us. All this crazy stuff. We didn't get not a dime. See what I'm saying? I'm already caught by police. I've never been much of a runner. You know, I've been chased, you know, here and there in my lifetime. But I could only run by so far. You know, I smoke a lot. Nah, I, mean, I only run by four so far. Bro. I got caught. After I got caught, they're like, yo, where's your man at? Where's your man at? You know, I don't speak in no English. A couple seconds later, I see my man run by me. <laughs> With them behind him like that. <laughs> Police talking about, come on, come on. I'm not chasing him, nigga. I'm in cuffs. You want me to chase my man? Anyway. So, yeah, I say that to come back to this. Because same situation... I'm telling this dude, nah, that's not that's not him. That's not the one. He's like, nah, he got the fat wallet, boom, the fat pocket. You know, I ended up in Spafford in that joint for that other one. You know what I'm saying? I had to have a couple of fights in Spafford because it was crazy Spafford at that time too. But anyway, you know, back to the story, boom. So I'm telling this nigga, nah, he's not the one, you heard? Nah, he got the fat pocket, ah, boom, whatever. So now all five of us, because it was five of us, we go after this dude who we think got the fat pocket because this nigga is like, oh, yeah, he, I can see it through, boom, whatever. So, yeah, we run up on him. We grab him. My man yokes him, boom. My man yokes him, right? But the dude is fighting. 
So since he's fighting, now I feel like he got bread. You see what I'm saying? So boom, he fighting, and my man's trying to put him down, but the dude's like like putting himself down. Real skinny Chinese dude too. Niggas got strength. But anyway, my man put him down with the yoke, and I'm digging his pockets. You know, I'm running through everything. This nigga had no bread. Boom, then we find some bread in his sock. I find some other bread in his inside pocket, you know? So now I'm I'm ripping shit, you know? I'm ripping shit. I'm looking to see if he got, like, some sort of chain or something. But, yeah, he had on, like, a, a, a ring, not a wedding band or nothing. It was, like, a ring or something, though. He had that. So, you know, we caught him. We caught him good. And I would tell you how much money we got, but I'm going to get to that. <laughs> Were we caught him good, but anyway, after we put him down, we still searching them, fucking with him, and all that. It just so happened to be like some other Chinese dudes passed by, you know, and they they, they was looking, and like they came running, they like hey 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 hey. So you know we we out we bounce, we bounce, and the other dude, the Chinese dudes, I guess they saw <clears throat> the Chinese man on the floor. And it was like, ah, oh, boom. So now they chasing us. The Chinese niggas is fake chasing us, you heard? So we like, whatever, you know? You know, I mean, today, I feel like we should have just turned around and beat them dudes up. And then, what would, you know, what happened to me would have not happened to me. But then again, who knows, man? Everything happens for a reason. Maybe I would have still been out there robbing niggas and ended up in jail, right? So boom. We running now from the Chinese dudes. So, you know, after a couple of blocks, my mans, you know, they run a whole different way. I didn't even really get to see. So these Chinese dudes is on us. So I run through Hester Park, you know, telling myself, well, I know, I know this park well. You know, I'm going to run through Hester Park. These niggas ain't going to run in there after me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a very, very dark park. You know what I mean? And. You know, I'm thinking, like, these is Chinese dudes. These dudes is not trying to run into nowhere dangerous like that. You know what I mean? So here I come, right? It, 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 the park is, like, by some... It, it used to be a movie theater there called Exix. You know what I mean? Back in the days on Exix over there. So it was, like, the back of that building sort of thing, right? But I used to play in this park all the time when I was a kid. And even during a teenager, I used to chill in this park. And boom, so I ran through there. Boom, Chinese dudes, I guess, decided to stay on me. So they on me now. Boom, boom, boom. I ran through there. I go to make a cut. And, and all of a sudden, there's a big ass fence there, bro. Word. And it wasn't even a fence you could climb. It was one of those fences with the little diamond holes that you can't really even put your fingers through. So, yo, I was tight, son. You feel me, dog? I was tight seeing that fence there because that fence wasn't there. It's like some fake Jewish projects there. And back in the days, it used to be those chains that you see on the pole like that, that you could jump over and shit. So when I saw this fence, I was like, yo, what the fuck? So now I'm, I'm, I'm fake trapped. I don't know what to do, son. I don't know what to do. So there ain't nothing else I, I could do. You see what I'm saying? Boom. So I throw up my hands and, you know, I try to fight, but Chinese niggas smoke me, son. And I'm talking about they smoke me, son. They smoke me badly, son. Word. And they kept telling me, oh, you want to keep robbing the Chinese? You want to keep robbing the Chinese while they was kicking me and punching me and doing all types of crazy shit to me, son. And, and what's crazy is that in this park, bro. It was really dark, like I said. So it wasn't like really like people that walked through there. Even in the daytime, people didn't really walk through that cut where they caught me. You see what I'm saying? Yo, I was tight getting fucked up. You heard? I I, I ain't even going to lie to you, son. I, I, I was so mad, son. And like while I'm getting fucked up, all I could think is like, yo, where the fuck did this fence come from, <laughs> son? It's like it was meant to be, son. Word, because where this magic fence came from? But anyway, these niggas smoke me, and while they smoking me, the way they talking to me, I could tell that these ain't no regular Chinese dudes. You know, they probably was down with a little gang of their own or whatever, you know what I mean? And there was a lot of Chinese gangs back then, you know, the Gold Shadows, the whatever, whatever. I knew a lot of names, but I can't really remember them right now, you know? 
And yeah, they smoked me, son. They smoked me badly. They bubbled my eye, my lip, everything, son. Tore my ass up, bro. You see what I'm saying? So after they beat me up, one of them like straight told me, like, yo, bro, like he didn't say it like that, like yo, bro, but you know, basically saying, like, yo, we can, you know, we go, we could kill you right here. You know, but we we just fucked you up. You know what I'm saying? Like basically telling me, man, like, you know, I hope you learned your lesson, bro, you know. Like commas a motherfucker word, son. And I suffer hard from the comma, bro. Word. So I was like, damn. After I got my ass whipped and I lent myself all the way back to the hood, cause that shit is mad far away we was at from the hood that I chill in. You know what I'm saying? So after I walked my ass back to the hood, you know, and I finally found these dudes, they looking at me and, you know, I see niggas with like smiles on their face and all that shit and all that, like, you know, so I'm talking, and, you know, they looking at me now. They like, yo, son, what the fuck happened to you? I'm like, son, them Chinese niggas caught me, son. He's like, word. They like, word. Oh, come on, man. So they like, yo, how they caught you? So I'm telling, I'm telling them the same way I'm telling y'all right now. I'm like, yo, you know that cut by by exits and shit, like through the back of the thing where you can jump and go through right A and down the hill, just like that. Word, I remember that shit clearly. They like, yeah. I was like, yo, they put a big ass fence there, son. They was like, what? I said, yeah, they put, like, a big-ass fucking fence there, and I couldn't get through, son. That shit was crazy. Nigga, Chinese niggas caught me and did me dirty, bro. But I still didn't care. You know, I still didn't care. They was like, damn, that's fucked up, son. That's crazy. I was like, fuck it. It is what it is, son. They, they you know, they could have did worse. Them niggas could have stabbed me. They could have did whatever and left me there. And people would have probably not found me for, for like, two or three days. Because I'm telling you, this shit... Where I was at in that cut, forget about it, son. I was terminated, you heard? But anyway, they let me live. I'm bubbled up. I'm talking to my mans in them now. I see them all with smiles and shit. So I'm like, yo, how much did we get? You know? Now, I ain't pussy, but I'm the smallest one out of these dudes at this time. And, you know, in the 90s, there was a lot of dominant dudes on the street. You know what I'm saying? That would use they, <coughs> they influence and they strength over niggas. You know what I'm saying? And then you got your cool ass niggas that niggas fuck with just because you they know you know that you cool with them like that. But anyway, you know, I get back to the block. I see these niggas smiling, whatever. So they acting like you know they say they didn't get shit. Niggas didn't have shit. So now I'm more mad, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, damn, I got my ass fucking whipped. And y'all didn't get shit. So what the fuck y'all smiling about and shit? You know? But I could see niggas scheming, man. And that's why I thank the 90s, man. Because nowadays I recognize funny movement. I know when niggas is scheming. And I learned all that from fucking with niggas in the 90s, bro. Because niggas were schemers and all that. And you have to watch these motherfuckers, man. I mean, you still got to watch niggas now, but not like before, man, where niggas was putting shit in their pockets without you knowing. Niggas was stealing stashes, doing all types of crap. But anyway, right? I see niggas with smiles on their faces. They acting like they ain't get nothing. So I went along with the story. Damn, we didn't get shit. I got my ass whipped. Got home. My mom's was going crazy. You know, I told her, yo, I just got jumped by some dudes. Fuck it. it ain't nothing. She wanted to take me to the hospital and all that. I'm like, nah. But anyway, I come back outside the next day all fucked up, black eye, fucked up lip. My ribs is killing me. But I'm outside. You know, I'm a young nigga. That's what young niggas do. You know, we keep it strong. I'm back outside in the hood. When I get to the block, When I get to the block, I see all my man's fresh and shit. So I'm like, yo, how y'all niggas is all fresh? 
I thought we didn't get nothing. You know what I'm saying? So niggas is acting like, nah, nah, yeah, we got something, nah, broom. Nothing for me. Yo, I didn't get nothing. Niggas deaded me. Like, they just deaded me. So, like, I'm not out there hungry with them and shit like that. And that's why I don't fuck with niggas now. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't fuck with you niggas now, bro. And I know where some of y'all niggas are. And I be seeing some of y'all niggas. And y'all fucked up. Y'all broke. You know what I'm saying? Because what you do comes back in life, bro. Facts. Don't do people dirty. Because it comes back. But anyway, they deaded me on my little cut, and I took the ass whipping. So it was like, all right, man, whatever, man. But from that day on, bro, from that day on, bro, I never messed with the Chinese again, bro. I never put my hands on them niggas again, bro. I never even looked at them niggas again, bro. And I ain't going to say because I got my ass whipped because that wasn't the reason. The reason was... That I got my ass whipped and I it could have been worse. Them Chinese dudes could have killed me and left me there and probably got away with it if they got caught. Because all they would have had to say was like, you know, he was trying to rob us and we was defending ourselves. And they would have got away with that. So, you know, shout out to them for doing what they had to do, but not doing it the way, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 it could have been worse. That's all I'm saying, bro. So shout out to them Chinese dudes. And because of them, I never fucked with them niggas again. You see what I'm saying? Because they showed me that, you know, we could have killed you and we're going to let you live. So let our people live. You see what I'm saying? Start killing our people. Let them live. Word. So I switched my hustle, man. Started grinding, going to work, doing all types of other hustles. But I never fucked with the Chinese again, son. And, and that's why I'm on the channel telling y'all, yeah, now stop messing with the Chinese, you know, cut it out. Just leave them alone, bro. Stop being racist and, and all that other crap, man. Because I've done seen all types of crazy race, racism, and, and it just sucks, man. You know, you ain't got to like everybody, man, but just keep it to yourself, bro. You know, I don't like a lot of motherfuckers, you know, and I, 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 from a lot of different races. You see what I'm saying? But it ain't because I'm racist. It's just I don't like them motherfuckers, but... You know, I hang out with all types of people, bro. I done had all types of friends, Chinese, black, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Africans, everything, bro. I work with an African nigga every day. You see what I'm saying? Me and him kick it. He speaks Spanish. He show me African, you know, Korean, I mean, Creole, whatever he speaks, French. You see what I'm saying, bro? Cut it out. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, it's mainly about the Chinese, man. Stop fucking with those people, man. Leave them alone. They ain't doing none of us. You see what I'm saying? And we should stop fucking with them because, you know, even back in the days, like I said, when you're used to getting away with something, you're going to keep doing it. And back in the days, dudes was robbing these dudes because it was only a, a little two to four, you know what I mean? In jail, if you did get caught or one to three, high, depending how your lawyer was and how you played the cards, you know what I mean? But once they started giving that five to 15, all that stopped. You know what I'm saying? Or I think, well, it stopped a lot. I don't know if it stopped completely, but it stopped a lot. You see what I'm saying? And it was crazy, man. So leave the Chinese people alone. If there's anybody out there still robbing the Chinese people, man, leave them dudes alone. They ain't got no money. And even if they do, bro, whatever you take from them, bro, trust me, it's going to come back and the earth is going to take double. You see what I'm saying? And that I heard from another dude who's wise, and I listen to him every time. You know what I'm saying? That he tries to show some knowledge. I listen to that dude. You know what I'm saying? You know who you are. Shout out to you. You see what I'm saying? Word. And that's it, bro. That's all I'm saying. To these young dudes, stop killing yourselves. You see what I'm saying? Y'all do so unite. Y'all got it as good as, 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 I mean, way better than I had it. So stop getting at each other, killing yourselves up for nothing. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's what it is, man. Just get your money, smoke your blood, take care of your family. You feel me? Word. And don't mess with the Chinese, man. And for anybody out there messing with the Chinese fucking niggas, you heard? Word. Because them niggas taught me a lesson, man, how life could be worse. And, we, you know, you can lose your shit over some petty bullshit. And then, look, I, I would have lost my life that day and, the, and, and, and lost my cut. These niggas wasn't even planning on giving me my cut. You feel me? What kind of bullshit is that? Imagine them niggas would have stabbed me or something. You see what I'm saying? Or, 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 or shot me. And then these niggas deaded me on my cut, son. And like I said, that's why I don't fuck with you niggas now. You see what I'm saying? So I don't fuck with y'all niggas now. And most of y'all niggas is fucked up in the game. Word. 
So I stick to myself and only family, bro. You heard? Word. And I got a lot more other stories about the Chinese, man. But right now, we're going to keep it right here. Short. Subscribe to the channel. Big Sam TV. True stories, no gimmicks. Leave your comment. Whatever you think. If you know me and you see me. If you ever did any of the shit I just was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. You know what I mean? That's what I'm here for. And that's what it is. Big Sam TV. Holla at me. Peace.